Uh, thank you, Mary. I, I'm knocked off a little bit of, out of course from what I was going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, and I'm not going to mention much about what happened except to say at this moment in time, I actually feel really quite ashamed to be British. <coughs> so I've been really encouraged today, apart from that, I've been really encouraged today by the statements I've been hearing, lots of good statements, um, and it seems that we've moved a very long way since we had our first meeting of the CCW where we discussed uh, laws in 2013 in November, and it's moved a long way since then. And it's clear that delegations put a lot of thought and hard work into their statements today. They were very well formed and they sounded really informative to me. And although I hear many people saying, you know, we, d we don't know enough yet, we need more expert meetings, we're not sure about what these really are and what the ambiguities are. It's not what they would have said two years ago. They're very well informed. They understand now what they don't understand, and that is a good, very good step forward. But nonetheless, we're not really moving quickly enough. <clears throat> so the two sets of expert meetings we've had here, and thanks to France and Germany for chairing those, have been very successful, obviously, because all the delegations seem quite educated now about these. But because of all your work, I would say that there's a kind of arms race now among think tanks and academics throughout the world to write papers on this topic. I mean, there was hardly anything three years ago, and now there's a massive proliferation of, of ideas about what to do with this stuff. And unfortunately, as you might know or might not know, with think tanks and academics, you've got to have your own personal stamp. You've, you say the same thing as everybody else, you give it novel twists to make it look like it's original, because that's what your job is. And the unfortunate thing about that is, the longer we go on, the more confusing it gets. I mean, I, I just keep being in discussions with more and more and more people now, saying more and more things that are more or less the same as everybody else is saying, but, oh, it's my, my idea about how these need to be regulated. And there's a danger here that if we carry on long enough, everybody on the planet will have written a paper about it, and we won't know where we are. Uh, so it's like, sorry, I sound a bit annoyed, but, but I've had to deal with this quite a lot recently. Um, but it does, it's still a good thing anyway, that, that it's really getting out there. But... You know, we, the issues really, right back at the beginning, we talked about compliance, guaranteed compliance with IHL, and it's been very clear over two expert meetings, lots of scientists talking, lots of roboticists, that there's general agreement that for the foreseeable future, we're not going to be able to guarantee compliance with IHL. And we're not going to be able to do the qualitative type decisions that humans can do, and we're not going to be able to do proper distinction, discrimination, and warfare. And this has resulted now, with all the talk and all the kerfuffle, a lot of scientists now coming forward and saying, yeah, what are you using our technology for to do this? Now, 3,000, well, it was 20,000 people signed a petition this year, but when they analyzed it, there were more than 3,000 AI scientists like myself who signed a petition saying, we must ban autonomous weapons. And, you know, this was the leaders in my field. I, I signed it myself. It was, it was a very good petition. And, you know, they're saying to you, this isn't going to work. And who are you going to listen to? A bunch of lawyers that say, you know, oh, IHL, we'll all comply with IHL or we won't use them. Are you going to listen to scientists explaining to you this is not a good idea? And the number is really growing quite dramatically. Since that letter, a lot more, I've even seen research institutes now putting policies in place saying they will not work on autonomous weapons. Now, one of the... The developments are moving at a really fast pace, as Sri Lanka very eloquently put it today. Um, AI is moving at a very rapid pace. Discussions at the CCW are moving very slowly. So at what speed? Technology has this really strange way. I mean, you can sit and talk and you think, oh, everything's okay and it's going to be a long time in the future. But technology has this way of sneaking up on us and biting us on the bottom when we're least expecting it. We can look at the internet, you can look at the mobile phone, suddenly it's there, suddenly it's proliferating everywhere. And the latest group now to really look at this are the people working in machine learning, and that's the most advanced thing. It's something I worked on for 25 years, deep learning, so training robots to work using big data. And 
the head of Google DeepMind that works on, on this stuff has just called on me and asked me to have meetings about autonomous weapon systems. The main conference for machine learning people, it's a massive conference every year. It's happening in Italy in February, and they have decided that they're going to have a special session on autonomous weapon systems. So it's getting around the scientific community. Scientists are pissed off about it because they're using this technology. They're not concerned about the dual use thing. Of course, everybody's slightly worried about dual use. They're not worried that this is going to take their technology away because they understand that you can carry on using this for all the great things you can use it for. But if you're going to target people and kill them, that is not dual use. There's only one use for targeting and killing, and that's for targeting and killing. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about dual use either. People want to develop the stuff for anything, well, very good. But what this is all pointing to, and what a really concern in my scientific community is, as we move forward, we're seeing autonomous cars, we're seeing robots being used for everything now. Um, there are the places in, in China now that are fully automated for cooking you a fresh burger better than any human can do. They chop up the meat specially for each customer. I don't eat meat, but they chop up the meat specially for each customer in advance, not like McDonald's, and give them a burger. You have one manager in charge of 11 outlets, and they're spreading like crazy. Um, you have robots now mixing cocktails and in, in Singapore serving drinks. So, so this is getting out of hand. And a lot of, uh, I mean, it's it's all quite good, but a lot of my, my group now of scientists are coming forward in a big way about too much automation and are looking at the notion of massive unemployment now. That's the big area. So, so please let's not bring this same idea of full automation into armed conflict. It's a disaster to do, and that looks like where we're heading with it. And none of us in the scientific community really want that. We don't want mass unemployment either, obviously. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I got carried away and lost where I was even going, but, but I think I've said what I need to say. Uh, I'm just, just going to say at the end is that we've had these great discussions, but I think, you know, uh, there's so, only so many times and ways you can say the same things. Compliance with IHL, okay? Um, ethical problems, Martin's Clause, we, we, everybody's pretty much accepted all those things. And also the whole idea of international security. We're not going to be in a good place generally on our planet when this work, when this proliferates everywhere, which it will do if we don't stop it. And what sort of accidental conflicts will we get into? What sort of reconstruction processes will we have after conflicts? What sort of mess will it leave the whole planet in for security? It's certainly not going to be better. My grandchildren are not going to be having a very good life if we let this carry on. So could we please, could I please appeal to you, just personally appeal to you, to deepen these discussions? We need to move forward to a proper uh, GGE, government group of experts, and the, the whole of the CCW can be involved in that. It doesn't mean you stop learning about the thing, but if we keep on having, are we going to keep on having more and more and more of these new experts coming in to the point until they find something that says a group of people who say, no, this is all OK, go on with it. Is that, is that the aim? I'm, I'm not sure what the aim is here in carrying this on. Is it just confusion? So, oh, hell, I'll stop there. Okay. Is that enough? Thank you, Mel. <laughs>